Hi all. Today let's take a look at a tool called Scully, which is basically a static site generator. And using this, we will try to convert an Angular single page application to a static site. So today I have created an Angular 14 application, which makes use of a NestJS backend server. So the Angular application consists of a login page, which is linked to the login route. And once we successfully provide the username and password, it will redirect us to the home route. So these two routes are available in our Angular application. And now let's see how we can convert this Angular SPA to a static site using Scully. So one prerequisite of converting any Angular application in, into a static site using Scully is that it should have at least one route defined. So since we have two routes defined in our application, our application is eligible for conversion using Scully. The Scully provides some schematics which can be used for automatically adding Scully to our Angular application and also add the commands which are needed for converting our application into a static site. Before we start executing the schematics, one thing we need to ensure is that in our angular.json, make sure that we have a key called default projects. So since this application was newly created using Angular 14, the default project was not added initially. So in case the default project is not available, our schematics will not be working as expected. So here we need to add our default project that is the anglers iphone scully that's the name of the project so i have added the default project and now let's stop our application and let's run the schematic for adding scully to our angular application so i am going to proceed with the installation now the schematic is asking what kind of renderer do we need to use in the Scully? By default, Scully makes use of Puppeteer for converting our application to the static site. So the other options that are available, one is the Scully platform server. So this is quite similar to the Angular Universal, which we can make use for server-side rendering. And another thing is the Playwright beta. So this is in beta format and the platform server also is in preview mode so by default we will be selecting the puppeteer so once you select the puppeteer it will add the required plugins which are needed for converting our angular application to the static site so now all the steps have been completed by the schematics if we go to our application you can see that some changes have been made so a new folder called scully has been created within which we have the plugins and we also have a ts config that is related to the scully similarly within the package.json some Scully related packages have been added along with the Puppeteer plugin. And here we have two commands which have been added. One is the Scully serve and other is the Scully. Scully serve command can be used for the development purpose. We can run our application both as a static site as well as an Angular application. Similarly, we have some configurations which are automatically generated we can make modifications to this according to our custom needs. And other thing is that within the app module.ts, the Scully lib module, which has been imported from Scully.io nglib, that has been added. So once all these steps are completed, let's run our application by making use of the Scully serve. Since we have created our application newly 
so first time we need to build our application so for that we need to run the command npm run scully so i am executing the command so this command basically what it does is it parses our application for any unhandled routes so currently we have two routes in our application one is the login and other is the home so scully will be basically creating index.html files for each of this route which is similar to pre-rendering which we had earlier covered in the angular universal so first we need to build our angular application so our angular application has been built now you can see the dist folder within which we have the angular scully application built so now let's run the previous command that is npm run scully so that we will generate the static website so as i previously mentioned now scully will be generating index.html for each of the routes defined within our angular application so it has created a scully routes.json file so if you come here you can see the different routes which are available within our application the login home and the default route which is login itself so now if we go to the dist folder you can see that a folder called static has been generated and within this for each of the routes there will be an index.html so we have the default index.html within the login we have the index.html and within the home also we have the index.html so this is kind of pre-rendered which will make our initial rendering of our application quite fast so in order to serve our application during development we can make use of the command npm scully serve so one advantage is that it will serve the same application in two modes one is an angular application that is in the port 1864 and other is the static website that will be served on 1668 so let's go to our static website now so here you can see within our index.html you can see that it is being pre-rendered and once we log in our application will work in a normal way but in case when we refresh the home route you can see that the home route is pre-rendered and all the data which is coming from an api i am calling here that is being already rendered within our home.html that is the home slash index.html so let's apply some throttling to this application and when we refresh it you can see that our page is already rendered but one problem with this approach is that even though our page has been pre-rendered when the javascript side is loaded what happens is that the api call is made again so if we go to our code in the home route that is a home component which is linked to the home route within the initialization of our home component there is a code which calls the get cities api so this is an http call to the nest.js server so we get a list of cities and once we receive the cities we recreate our ui so this in effect nullifies the advantage which we get using the pre-rendering of our home page so now let's see how we can avoid this duplication by making use of transfer state within scully so before we see how to introduce 
transfer state into our application. Let's see what is meant by transfer state. So transfer state is basically the process of transferring some state from server side rendering to our client side rendering. So here if we check our home.html that is a home slash index.html you can see the there is a script tag called scully.io transfer state and currently it is empty. So whenever we want to share some state between the server and the client, we can write it in the transfer state and it will be available here so that the client side JavaScript will be able to read it from here and make use of that within the application. So currently what happens is that even though our server side is rendering the, these pages, that is the cities along with the images. When the JavaScript is loaded, it will recreate the process once more by calling the API. So in order to prevent that, let's add the transfer state to our application. So for that, within our home service, I am going to add scully.io nglib. Within this, we have a service called transfer state service. So we can inject it here. So once we have injected that, what we can do is it provides a convenience method transfer state dot use scully transfer state. So it accepts two parameters. First is the name of our transfer state. So here I am giving it as cities. And the second is the source for that particular data. So here I have given the HTTP observable as the source. So once we have added this, when we call this get cities method within our home component, Scully will automatically take care of managing the transfer state. That is, in case the server already fetched this data, then the client will be just making use of the transfer state and not making the actual API call. So in case it is not available, it will make the actual API call from the client. So now once we have made this change within our application, we need to build our Angular application using ng-build. And once it is built, we need to execute the command npm run scully one more time so that our static pages are generated. So our application has been built and our static site has been generated. Now let's refresh our web page. Now you can see that the cities API call which was being earlier made, it is no longer present. And if we go to our home index.html, you can see that within the transfer state, we have an object. And within this, you will be able to see a key called cities. And within that value, we have the result of our API. So the API is executed during the server side rendering and the data is stored within our HTML so that the client will not request the API one more time and destruct the state. So this way our application will be much faster. So you might have noticed that the Scully static site generator is quite similar to the Angular Universal and especially the pre-rendering which is available within Angular Universal. But you would also see that the Scully provides some utility methods which makes the process of generating the static site much easier compared to the Angular Universal. So hope you are able to get a good idea about how we can convert an Angular application to a static website by making use of the Scully tool. See you soon. Thank you.